I'll be giving you an overview of a Juki 241. This is a fairly common industrial walking foot machine that's a popular choice in upholstery shops. The entire portion that we casually refer to as the machine is actually technically called the head and it can be lifted out for transport or repair. It can be tipped back for cleaning, though it is very, very heavy and intended to live inside a dedicated table. Our table has power switch located here, which is connected to our motor underneath there. We have a knee pedal that we'll demonstrate shortly and a foot pedal. As this machine is intended for upholstery, you do want to use an upholstery specific thread. Our go-to is going to be a nylon 69, which is nice and strong and gonna work great for most of our projects. I'm going to thread the machine first and then I will go back and show you a couple of trouble spots to be aware of. Alright, let's go back and start again. All the way back here, I want to point out up here in our thread stand here, you can see some loose scrap thread in there. Um, the thread can bounce right out of your thread stand, so you see all kinds of ways that people have invented to just keep their thread in there. This is one solution. Sometimes you see the loop taped closed up there. And when you come down to these two thread guides right here, and right here, these are one way to thread them, but adding loops or changing the threading pattern, pattern there is one way that you can affect the tension on your machine. So you can play around with those a little bit and every upholsterer is gonna have slightly different preferences for how they like those to be threaded. Now I particularly wanna point out these two spots in here. These are the most common trouble areas for students. These are tension discs. This right here is for adjusting tension. And when you come around these two discs, you need to make sure that your thread actually nests down in between those discs. Listen. Can you hear that kind of slide in? And if it isn't actually between those discs, you won't have tension on your top thread and it's going to be very, very, very messed up. Now down here, as I come around this, I'm going to need to lift my thread so that it clicks into this tension spring. And again, if I don't do that, my thread's gonna bounce out and cause all kinds of trouble. So I'm gonna be quiet and let's listen for this to snap in. Just a little sound, but then I know that that has grabbed. Up through these, back down, and when I get to my needle, if I get down there way close, I can see that my needle has a little groove on this side, on the left, and that tells me that that's where my thread is going to come in because my thread will slide right down the side of the needle. So that's the top threading. We also need to talk about the bottom threading or the bobbin. Now this machine does have a bobbin winding capability and I'll show you that a little later, but I wanna keep threading. So for now, we are going to use a pre-wound bobbin, which is really nice. This is the same nylon 69 thread and this machine takes a size M. Now this machine has a bottom loading bobbin, so I'm gonna to have to reach underneath to access the casing. In order to remove this, there's a little lever that I'll lift with my thumb and then the casing will slide out. So once I have my casing out, I can drop a bobbin in and I want to put it in so it's spooling off counterclockwise. And you can see, here's our tension spring. So there's a little slot for me to slide my thread into and come around to catch 
the tension spring. Let me do that one more time with my bobbin casing. I'm going to drop my bobbin in, spooling off counterclockwise. My thread slides into the slot and around into the tension spring. I'm going to clip off some of this tail that I've been pulling off. But once I have that in there, I can again lift this lever with my thumb. So that's going to hold my bobbin into position. And then back under the table I go to replace this casing. Now this has to sit back in there in exactly the right spot. If that does not nest in, that's going to create all kinds of misery for us. So as you get comfortable, you'll be able to do it by feel, but if this is a new machine for you, don't be afraid to get your peepers under there and make sure that everything looks like it's sitting correctly. So now I need to bring my bobbin thread up and to do that I'm going to hold my top thread and I'll come over here to the hand wheel and by pulling it forward I'm going to walk my needle and it'll go down and catch my bobbin thread and bring it up. So once I see my loop come up I can sweep it with the scissors and now I have my bottom and my top thread ready to sew. Before you dive in on any projects, you really want to feel very comfortable with the general operation of your machine. So I have some fabric swatches here and we're going to be sewing on the black and white thread so we can really see what's going on. First thing is that we'll need to lift our foot and there's two ways for me to do that. One is down below where I have a knee lift. You can see if I lift that, my foot's gonna go up. It's nice and convenient, but it will not stay up. If I want it to stay up, there's a lever in the back and I can lift that and my foot will stay up. So it's a little more awkward to get to, but if I need that foot lifted, that's also an option. Either way, I get that foot up and my fabric goes under. Down goes my foot and I'm gonna turn the machine on. So you'll hear the motor running because this is a clutch motor, which is what the machines generally come with. If you want a silent option, you can upgrade to a servo motor. It's a little more expensive, but it's silent and you can adjust the speed. But if I want to sew, the first thing I'm gonna do is hold on to my threads on these industrial machines because they have such speed and power. If you don't hold on to those threads, they can tend to wrap around the bobbin casing and tangle on you right away, right out of the gates. Um, so for the first couple stitches, I just wanna hold on to these. Then my foot's down on the pedal. And as long as I'm light on my feet, I can actually control the speed here. I'm gonna get a couple stitches in and then I can drop my threads. So just those first couple stitches is all I need and then I can let go and I can drive. And you can see on this machine, we have a blue tape for our half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna try and follow along on that. When I get down to the corner, I'm gonna use my hand wheel way down here walk it forward and we'll see the needle drop. As soon as that's down, I can use my knee lift to lift the foot, turn my fabric, foot goes back down and I can continue sewing. Let's do another corner. Down to the hand wheel I go, drop the needle, lift the foot, turn my fabric. If you are used to a residential machine, this is going to feel very fast, but as soon as you get used to it, you're gonna wonder how you ever did without it because you get into long sofa cushions and things like that. And it is very, very nice to have the extra speed. Let me turn one more corner. 
And when I am ready to be done, this lever here is going to be my reverse. So I'll hold that all the way down. And my machine will go backwards and that will lock my seam up so that it can't unravel. Let's do that one more time. As I'm sewing, my lever goes down and a couple of stitches backwards is gonna be enough to lock it up. Now when I'm ready to pull this out, if I lift my foot, it's probably gonna feel some resistance and I'm gonna take my hand wheel again and walk that until I feel the thread release. You just have to get to the right part of the bobbin cycle for it to slide out. We showed you earlier that the threading here is one way you can somewhat adjust the tension, but this dial right here, that's gonna be our major top thread tension adjustment. So lefty loosey, righty tighty, And actually that feels a little better to me. I think the top, the top thread was quite tight. Now that's laying nicer for us. The other adjustment to be aware of is over here. This is our stitch length. And if I go all the way down, you're going to see a teeny, 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 tiny stitch. Can you see the difference? Now going the other way, if I max this out, sometimes for vinyl you want a longer stitch so you're not perforating that, or if you want to gather stitch, you turn that all the way up and you're gonna get super long loopy stitches. Let me turn this so we can see, look how long those are now. So it's got wonderful stitch adjustment. We can really get a nice range. Now that long stitch, we would not often use. But one way we sometimes use it is if we need to gather in an edge. So that very long stitch can be very nice if you need to just shear in around a curve or something of that sort. Let's talk a little bit about feet for this machine. There's a nice variety of feet available and we can switch them out. It has two screws here. This one we remove entirely and the outer foot will drop off. Don't lose that. And the center foot has a screw that we just need to loosen. And that will allow our center foot to drop down off. So the one I pulled off that you'll see in a lot of our videos is a single welt foot. And hopefully you can see how it's designed with a little tunnel in here that will accommodate a welt cord. Let's see from the back. So that's designed to ride over our welt cord as we sew. And this is actually the foot that I have on my machine 99 times out of 100, even if I'm sewing zippers or just a flat seam. Um, that's a pretty versatile foot. However, some professionals are going to prefer to sew unwelted seams with a flat foot. And you can see there, just absolute level across the back. Still a two part foot. And you can also get a double welt foot. So you can see that it has accommodations for two pieces of cording. And the center foot is also going to fit that same profile. We do have a little video on that. And we also have top stitch feet. So this is made to ride along a seam if you want a visible top stitch. We can get these in different offsets and lefts and rights. So there are plenty of feet available. It's a great opportunity to find um, a sewing machine professional in your area um, because they're gonna know all the goodies that are available to you. 
Now let's take a peek at the bobbin winder on the side. This machine, as we said before, it takes a size M, which is the, the larger of the standard upholstery bobbins. Um, we have metal casing on here that will just slide into position. And I'm gonna reroute this thread. We absolutely can run two threads, um, but I just have one in today. So I'm still through my stand. I'll come down to the first thread guide and tension discs. I gotta go around and I gotta snap it in. And then I'll come underneath the bobbin, give it a few laps, take my tail out the side, and then I'll push this forward. And watch this is going to engage with the belt on my machine and that's what's gonna turn this to wind. So push that forward and now I'm ready to wind this bobbin. And when it gets full, it will push against this lever right here and it'll snap back. And I'm gonna turn my machine on and we'll watch this wind. After a few laps, we can drop that, trim our tail off and keep on going. Now it is worth noting, the tension on this bobbin is going to be slightly different than the machine wound bobbin um, or the pre-wound bobbin that I showed you before. So if you are switching back and forth from machine wound to pre-wound, you're going to have to fiddle with the tension to get them to behave right. If you like to fill your own bobbins, I'd highly encourage you to purchase doubles of all your thread colors so that you can always keep a bobbin winding while you're sewing. You don't have to stop and do it in the middle of a project. In terms of care and maintenance for this machine, it's quite a workhorse. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot. Your main tasks are going to be keeping it clean and keeping it oiled. Upholstery workrooms can generate a lot of dust, so it's not a bad idea to keep this covered when you're not using it. Maybe every week you wanna take an air nozzle and just blow everything out so that dust doesn't accumulate in the tension discs or any place it's not supposed to be. You also want to, depending on how much you're using it, maybe once a day, maybe once a week, oil your machine. And you can look to your machine guide for that, but there's also red dots everywhere in here that I'm intended to put a drop of oil. And if you do that, you're going to keep your machine very happy and very healthy. So pros and cons for this machine. Pros. First, it is a very sturdy, well-built machine. You can get one secondhand, and if it's well cared for, it should last you the length of a career, no problem. Um, it's going to handle three, four, five, six layers of fabric without batting an eye. It is well built for upholstery. I really like the stitch adjustment being just a simple dial. We can get a nice range of stitches. Cons, maybe only just a couple. Um, the one is that this is a more expensive machine compared to the consoles that we have showed you. Uh, but you can really tell in the weight and operation of it that it is a slightly better machine. The other thing that's not ideal is that it is a bottom loading bobbin. There's just a slightly higher margin of user error in there, which if you're the only person using the machine, you're going to get used to it. It is going to be fine. But if you have a lot of new sewers, um, you bring in apprentices or you have classes, just know that that can be very problematic getting that bobbin casing snapped back into place. And as with all our industrial walking foot machines, do be aware this machine is designed for upholstery weight fabric and it is not going to do well with lighter and multi-purpose fabrics such as you might use for bedding and drapery printed cottons, linens, if you are using a lot of those, you are going to want to invest in a straight stitch machine that is designed to handle them. But other than that, this machine gets absolutely two thumbs up from us.